So Windows has been getting worse and worse ever since Windows 8 came out. I think that the vast majority of people would agree that Windows 7 is the best version of Windows that Microsoft ever produced. And after Windows 8 we had Windows 10. Now Windows 10 was one step forward and two steps back. Because yes, the interface did become a lot easier to work with on a desktop, However, it was two steps back in the sense that it completely obliterated any semblance of privacy that we had on our computers, and Windows 11 has only continued that trend. So Windows 11, it has more ads than ever before. You've got ads in your start menu, and now they're adding ads into the recents menu underneath your pinned icons. And of course now you have Windows Recall, which is coming out on Copilot Plus PCs, and its entire purpose is to screenshot everything that you do on your computer and create an index that you can easily search through. Now, although that may sound appealing to some people, and I won't lie, I can think of some pretty good use cases for it, it just isn't something that you want to do if you value your privacy. Hear me out. So with Windows Recall, if somebody gets a hold of your computer and gets to log into it as an administrator, then they can get in and see all of your Windows Recall information. That's really dangerous. Now, understands this. Currently, if someone gets a hold of your computer, they can use existing tools and logs to piece together exactly what you did and when. However, Windows Recall makes that so much easier. So in the future, and when you get hacked and your computer is compromised and a bad actor's logged into it, well then they're going to be able to search through a set of screenshots of everything that you ever did on your computer. It's not a good situation. So you might be thinking, should I switch to Linux? And the answer to that question is, it depends. Hi everybody, my name is Patrick, I'm a security engineer in the Midwest US, and today we're going to talk about the burning question on everyone's mind. Should you switch to Linux? So there's a few key areas that you want to focus on when it comes to the question of if you should switch to Linux. First of all, are you willing to relearn how to use your computer? Are you, and then second, are you afraid of the commands line? And then third, do you have programs available to do what you need to do on your computer that are working on Linux? And then finally, what do you do that involves collaboration with other people? Those four aspects, I believe, are the most important considerations to take in when you're considering switching from Windows to a Linux-based operating system. All right, so let's break those down in some more detail. Uh, so are you willing to relearn how to use your computer? Uh, Linux is not Windows. It is not Mac OS. It's something completely different from either of those options, obviously. I mean, of course, it's not going to be the same thing. Uh, so Linux works very differently than these operating systems, and that means you're going to have to relearn a lot of the stuff that you already know, know today about how to use your computer. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you cannot go into this with the expectation that you're going to hit the ground running and you're going to be able to use it just as efficiently and effectively as you used your old operating system. It's going to take some time for you to ramp up and get a hold of it. and. Here's the thing about this. Windows does some things ass backwards. Like there, there are some workflows in Windows that just makes so little sense uh, that it, it's surprising that we all put up with it. For example, uh, dragging a file onto an icon on the taskbar. In Windows 11, that just doesn't work. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of little stuff in Windows that just doesn't make sense logically. Compared to Linux, where there is a pervasive logic throughout the system. There's a consistency. You can expect certain components to behave like other components. It's a lot more consistent in its operation than Windows is. But the thing is, you're already used to Windows. You're already familiar with how to do things in Windows. And so uh, that's going to taint your perspective a little bit because you might think that Windows is the right way, doing things the right way, when in reality, there's a better way to do things, you just haven't learned it yet. At the end of the day, Windows is actually pretty complicated. Uh, everything from the registry to the file system to the way the interface works, 
It's all very convoluted and complicated. I mean, just look at the settings app in the control panel, for example. There are literally workflows where you click through things in the settings app, it kicks you out to control panel, and then control panel kicks you back into the settings app. It makes zero sense. But here we are, and we've learned to accept these things as just the way things are, whereas Linux, uh, almost every Linux desktop, has just one settings app, and everything's in there. So yeah, Windows is complicated, and it does things backwards. The difference is you're used to it. You're familiar with how it does those things. And because of that familiarity, when you first start using Linux, you're going to feel that some things don't make sense, but once you get used to them, you'll understand there's a common thread, a logic that's pervasive throughout the operating system. All right, and are you afraid of the commands line? So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say you run into a problem on your Linux system. So you Google how to solve that problem. And then the answers that will fix the problem are commands that you have to type into the terminal and execute via the commands line. Uh, so why is that? Why is that what you always find? Here's the thing. There are dozens, maybe even millions, of Linux desktop flavors, and all of these different desktops have a totally different way of navigating them and accessing settings, etc. So here's the thing. The people who are fixing your problems, they can either write a dozen guides to show you how to use the graphical interface in each different desktop to solve your problem, or they can write one guide where they show you how to use the commands line to solve your problem, because the commands line, that text-based interface, is a consistent thread that is, again, pervasive throughout all the different flavors. So, again, instead of writing 12 different articles, they can just write one article and have it be a fix for everybody who uses that family of distros. And also, the terminal is just a, a more effective way of interacting with a system. And if you're afraid of the commands line, I can promise you, it's a lot easier than you think. Just watch a couple tutorials, and if you're interested in me making one, let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you. Uh, but the, the terminal is much easier to interact with than you might think. It does have a little bit of a learning curve. But again, the reoccurring theme here is that there's logic to it. There's logic to it that just isn't present in PowerShell on Windows. Logic that isn't present on Windows, period. And also, depending on your graphical interface that you choose, uh, the terminal's going to be required to do some things. Uh, but again, the terminal's not actually all that hard, and you shouldn't be afraid of it. Uh, for example, you're probably already familiar with a similar system, Google Search. Google Search is essentially a text-based interface. You type something into the box, you hit enter, and then it does something and gives you results. Uh, that's the same concept of how you would use a terminal. You type something into the commands line, you hit enter, it does something, and then it gives you results. So see, it's really not that complicated. And also, figuring out how to use the terminal will not only make you more effective on Linux, but it'll make you more effective on Windows and Mac OS too, because a lot of those commands and concepts carry through to those other operating systems. So even if you don't stick with Linux, well, now that you've learned how to use the commands line, and you can carry that back into Windows or your Mac, and be even more efficient than before. So it's really not a waste of time. It, it'll save you time in the long run, regardless of if you stick with Linux or not. All right, so problem number three, software. So let's get this out of the way. There is no Microsoft Office. There is no Adobe Suite on Linux. Those are the two biggest things that I see people saying are the main pain points. Because people are so used to the Adobe Suite and so used to Microsoft Office that learning something new does not sound very appealing. And yes, there are definitely alternatives to all of those tools that are available on Linux in one form or another. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing is, again, you're going to have to relearn everything. And those tools aren't going to do everything the same way as the tools that you're used to. And so it's, it's a steep learning curve in this aspect, right? So learning the operating system itself, learning the commands line, that's not such a steep learning curve. 
The part that really gives people trouble is adjusting to having to use all these alternatives to the applications they're already familiar with. Uh, because at the end of the day, an operating system is a vehicle to deliver you applications. You don't really need to care about the operating system so much as you would care about the applications that you use to get work done, speaking from a pragmatic point of view. And so, yes, there are alternatives like Photoshop. The alternatives are like PhotoP, uh, GIMP, kind of, not really a Photoshop alternative, Krita. And then uh, things like Adobe Audition, you have Audacity on Linux. And then, of course, for Microsoft Office, you have options like OnlyOffice and LibreOffice, both of which have pretty good compatibility with Microsoft Office formats. It's not perfect, though. I'm not going to lie and say that it's going to be a walk in the park. You're going to have to relearn quite a bit. But don't let that scare you off. Because, again, these are skills that, trans that are transferable between operating systems. If you learn how to use alternatives on Linux, then you're going to better understand the core concepts of how these types of applications function in the first place. Which, again, if you end up not sticking with Linux, you can carry that experience back to Windows or your Mac, and it'll make you even more effective on those platforms. And the thing is, you've learned how to use Windows apps. And stuff like Adobe, stuff like Microsoft Office, those are complicated programs, more complicated than most of the Linux alternatives. And so if you are able to learn those, then you can definitely learn the Linux alternatives. And again, it's a skill that will carry forward past just Linux and into other operating systems. And then finally, do you collaborate with other people? Here's why I bring this up. Because, yes, we just talked about all these great alternatives for common software that's available on Linux. The thing is, they're not always compatible with what your colleagues are using. For example, if you have a spreadsheet with certain macros in it that your colleague uses on Windows, and then he shares that with you, well, those macros might not work at all on your Linux program equivalent. And so it's important that you do take an inventory and say, okay, here's what I need to be able to share with other people, here's what they're going to share with me, and you need to make sure that those file formats, specifically those file formats, are compatible and work well with the alternative software that you will be using. And also keep in mind, a lot of places, a lot of businesses and people who work together, they like to use real-time collaboration tools. And that's just not really a thing on Linux. So it's, it's a very much a more isolated experience. So if you have colleagues or teammates who use a certain piece of software, uh, that might be a problem if you switch to Linux and all of a sudden you can't contribute the same way you could before. It's just an unfortunate fact of the matter. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Linux is not for everybody. If you need a specific program to do a specific thing for money, like you're doing it for work, then yeah, you're going to need to use the right tool for the job. But if, if your, your friends, your colleagues, your teammates, if they use file formats that do work in the programs available on Linux, then you should definitely give it a shot. But that's something that you need to consider before you switch to Linux, because if you don't, it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth, and you're going to be unhappy with your Linux experience, which is not what I want for you. Alright, so at the end of the day, should you try Linux? Well, the answer is yes, if you're willing to learn something new, you're willing to learn how to use the commands line, you're willing to use alternative applications, and also if you're willing to use it to collaborate with others, if it functions for you to collaborate with others. But if the answer is yes to all four of those aspects, then you should absolutely give Linux a shot. And the magic of Linux is that there's a desktop operating system out there for everybody. Like, if you like something Mac-like, you've got GNOME. If you want something like Windows, you've got KDE. But do keep in mind, although on the surface level, level aesthetically, they may be similar to the proprietary options, uh, they do function very differently under the hood, and you need to expect that you'll be interacting with your computer differently than you were on those proprietary options. One of the 
biggest motivations that I see that people have to try Linux is the fact that it's built for the person using it. Linux is built specifically with the best intentions for the person who's using the computer. The interface is made to adapt to you. It's made to make your work easier. Windows is not like that. Windows is built for the sake of advertisers. It is not built with you, the user, in mind. So you'll have a much better experience on Linux, I'm confident to say, that most people will have a much better experience using Linux than they would with something like Windows. And that comes down to the fact that Linux is actually centered around you as the person using it. So anyway, thank you for watching. My name was Patrick. I hope this helped you make a decision on if you should try Linux. I really hope that you do give it a shot. I think you'll be impressed. And as always, I appreciate you making it this far. If, you have, if you're seeing this part of the video, then leave a little uh, clown emoji in the, this, in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'm just in this for the subs and the likes. So if you want to see more videos like this, then hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, then hit subscribe. You can always undo it later. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.